Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Antelope Valley Fairgrounds here. It's 2017 show of figure eight racing and we're very excited to be bringing it once again here on Low Budget TV as we got a lineup of cars ready to go in the pit area. These drivers, some of these cars look fresh. The other ones, well, let's just say not so much. However, we... We've seen this event for a number of years, and if there's one thing that you can say about it, it is unpredictable. I'm Jeffrey Best with Low Budget TV, gonna be bringing you guys all the coverage from here tonight. We got some onboard cameras that are running right now. We got some track cameras. We got a designated intersection camera, as well as the main footage that you see here. And this, all this footage here for you folks, so we will not miss a thing. And there's a lot that happens in these events. So we're gonna get you the lineup for Heat race number one. Top three will transfer. 49 machine of Ken Lucasonis starting on the pole. The 44 machine of Johnny Troche starting second. Third place starter is the number four machine of Cole Hines with the 5150 of Kenny Boysford. We got the 79 machine of Mike Hopkins and rounding out the field, it is the number 15 machine of Michael Lave. So top three will transfer six cars. That means half of this field will have to deal with the B main. Now, if you do not make it through the B main, they have a cool thing set up to where the drivers have an option to buy in to the main event. That option is a hundred dollar option. So if you don't make it at all, you could put a hundred dollars down to try and try your hand at the main event. And what's cool about that is that $100 is then added to the purse. $1,500 to win here. If you're second, you get $900. Obviously, the big money is that first place spot. These drivers are going to be going for it. You have to make it into the A main event. These drivers don't want to spend money before they make money. But we'll see what happens. Lucas Zonas and Trosh getting ready to start us off. The green flag flies and we're back to race in the Antelope Valley Fair 2017. Will our track cameras survive? Probably not. Hines, oh, big contact already between <laughs> Lucas Zonis and Trosh. That puts Trosh around. He's now in reverse. Hines getting into it with Boysvert as they complete lap number one. On a round goes Lucas Zonis. Hines being chased down by Boysvert. Already seeing some heavy contact in the heat. 44 Troche off track as they navigate through the intersection. We've seen some big hits here before. Lave now gets into Troche. And we're probably going to totally lose the camera right now. But we're low budget TV. It's not unusual. Look at the lap traffic for Hines. That's Lave in the number 15 machine. Some people might be like, oh, that sounds like a new driver. No, it's not. It's just we've all been pronouncing his name wrong for years. As our tripod avoids some danger there. Lave and Trosh right now, two in danger of not making it. However, this is the battle for the transfer spot. Boys for Lucas Zonas, and then you got the 79 machine of Hopkins. Hopkins moves into the transfer. Oh! Oh, and a hard hit! That is a hit that likely knocked out two cars here early. Lave getting together with Hines. Hines was our leader. We have an onboard camera on both of those cars, one of which is supplied by Lobo TV, the other one courtesy of Michael Abe's team. Well, that that was a hard hit. That was that was that was a straight up figure eight hit. I don't know if Hines is going to be able to make it back out tonight. That hit was something that might have knocked him out. I believe at this point, I believe the 5150 machine is the leader being chased down by Hopkins. I could be wrong. Usually I'm wrong. So you see more figure eight action, but these drivers are now aware that, uh, that they're in much better shape as far as making it in as two cars of the six were knocked out. Hopkins spins it out. The 79 machine looks like he actually got kind of stuck there. Lucas Zona's trying to chase him down. I don't think they need to. I believe Trosh on the 44 machine is the car right now outside looking in. 
There's Trosh has been seeing the 44. Hopkins, the 79, being chased down by Lucas Zonas. White flag is in the air. The bravest flag man in the world standing down there. Here's Boysbert using the berm. Oh, man, I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> Figure eight racing, Antelope Valley style. If you've never been to one of these events, these are a heck of a lot of fun. Highly encourage it. Great family deal out here. And they love America. We just spent the last hour honoring America. So checkered flag flies on this first heat race. And already some major damage for a couple of cars. That's Heinz and the number four machine. Hopefully they can get that thing fixed. But I don't know. That was that was such a heavy hit for both of these cars. This car, his name is Poison, the number 15 machine. They're going to have to get those cars towed off. Hard hits for these drivers in the first heat race. Down Old Valley Fair 2017. folks it is now time for heat race number two again top three cars will transfer i think it might have been the 44 machine of troche who was not able to transfer so he'll be in the b main event where they're going to transfer two cars looking down at heat race number two it is the 50 machine of jeremy edwards starting on the pole with the 88 machine of tim darty starting outside row number one row number two is the one machine of brandon leonard and the 14 that is driver peyton zamerslaw then we have the final car in this field, the number 61 machine of Nick Schepner. Looking through the field, I believe there should be one more car. Looking for the 95 machine of Tony Earbaron. I did not see that car down during the uh, during the pre-race show, so gotta wonder if that car is having an issue, if they weren't able to make it out tonight. Whatever the case, obviously, uh, hope maybe they make it for the main event. If not, we still have 11 cars, two of which that may have been knocked out. A little bit of a uh, little bit of an update on these cars. Let's take a look at Heinz machine getting worked on. They're looking underneath the hood. Not a lot of movement right now. Might have already seen that this car is done. And now over here, Lave and their team looking under the hood. They're going to work. So 15 machine definitely isn't done yet. I don't wonder if Heinz is going to be able to do anything. He might have just a little bit too much damage on that car. So five cars in this heat race. Three of them will transfer. If we have another intersection like we had <laughs> in the last race, well, that just means that we will have every car running transfer. We'll also be covering other events this weekend, Low Budget TV. We will be, well, tonight we will be covering the uh, autocross. So that's certain to be a lot of fun. As well as Sunday, there's going to be a demolition derby happening out here. And we will be covering that. Full coverage of that demolition derby is going to be on our channel on Low Budget TV. So as as we get going here, if I now I'm gonna say if I if I'm a kid and I had to choose my favorite looking car, that's one thing. But the thing is, I never grew up, so it still applies as far as what car I think looks the best. Now, for the record, Tommy Mason isn't out here tonight. He's right now with some family. Usually, he's joining me on this show. But I know Tommy. You remember seeing one of these cars racing as an American stock at Bakersfield Speedway. I know you do. But the 61 machine, I think, won over my heart. So, like I said, as a kid and as an adult, because it hasn't been a very big difference. <laughs> For me, that 61 machine, Nick Schepner. I just, I don't know, I just like, A, the, the car style, the, the paint job. 
But also, I, I think I would also be hard pressed because as a kid I loved police cars. So Jeremy Edwards' team. So maybe I don't really know what I, as a kid, would have would have gone for. I just don't know. In this race, I know that that number one machine is carrying an onboard camera. So they're getting ready to go. I believe we're going to have one more pace lap before we get to racing here. So Leonard there carrying the low budget TV onboard camera, the 61 machine, as we mentioned, is Shepner, 14 driver Zammer's Law. Now I'm just working the opposite way. Doherty and Edwards starting on the front row. A big, a big part of this is survival. We've seen it every year just about where it's not always safe as being up front, but it's a figure eight race. We're covering other figure eight racing throughout this year, if you want to check that out. We'll be live in Indianapolis for the three hour World Figure Eight show. I cannot wait for that. Out in Indianapolis, the Speedrome. Three hour figure eight race. That one's gonna be insane. Again, we're out here at the Antelope Valley Fair. It's been always uh, a very popular one for the community. A lot of travelers come out to this one, including us at Low Budget TV. We love to check out this event whenever we can. As they get the one to go here. Lots of lots of fun events, not just not just at the fair as far as behind me with rides and and uh, food and petting zoos and all that good stuff, but also just here in the, what they call the arena. We got figure eight racing here, obviously autocross. Green flag is in the air. Who survives to make it to the main event in this one? Well, Doherty's gonna go wide. And the one machine's gonna just about spin out. Three wide and contact, two cars get together. Are we gonna lose our camera? Nope. They spared it. Lots of contact right around the one machine holds the transfer spot, the final transfer spot. Zammer's Law right knows that, gets into the one machine and a couple cars having contact. So Leonard getting stuck over there with the 61 machine of Shepner. They get unhooked, but now they have some time to make up if they're gonna make it into this main event. Oh, well, here comes Leonard. Oh boy! That was a figure eight intersection. Zammer's Law kind of getting payback, I guess. I wonder if Leonard, it looks like that car might only have reverse gear. Nope, it's moving. Almost an intersection with our leader, Edwards. Yeah, I think there's a bit of a rivalry happening between these two drivers. And of course, they're gonna go right through the intersection for it. I don't think Leonard's very happy with the 14 machine. Might, might feel like he got a little cheated in that uh, whole exchange. I don't think these guys are done though. Oh boy, <laughs> Zammer's Law delivers a punch there. Made a connection. That's South Paw. <laughs> yeah, so Leonard right now not looking good for a transfer. However, it does have some more chances. I, I think. Yeah, that car's sitting there. Here comes Amber's Law through the intersection. Edwards being chased down by Doherty. And then it's a matter of who's third. Oh yeah, Shepner. And now we got a whole mess going through the intersection. Here comes Doherty to the lead. Oh boy. Oh, more contact between these two. They're having a bit of a disagreement. 61 machine is a lap down. Edwards, ooh, is not. <laughs> oh, boy. And into Leonard goes the 61 machine. White flag is in the air for Doherty. 
Chipner having some exciting moments. Doherty going through the final lap. Edwards is kind of on a, a charge here, trying to catch back up. Could be Zamzla that is sitting there, but Doherty takes the win in E-race number two. And that is going to conclude heat race number two. Of course, we'll see who our official transfers are once the officials go through and make that determination. Oh, boy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, as we get ready to go here for the last chance qualifier, which will take two cars, you see the number 15 machine. Sitting right on over there. It looks like uh, the car was able to drive to this point maybe stalled out but they're going to try and get this car on track for the last chance he collided with this number four machine they seem to be at least looking at it no no rush it appears for the number four but they still have the opportunity to buy their way into the main event uh, unfortunately i'm sure they have other stuff they're going to be spending money on so will all be something to consider. However, we do have three cars rolling right now, two of which will be guaranteed a spot by the end of this last chance qualifier. And we're gonna get you through the starting line of the 44 machine. He'll be in this event. Good to see that they are back out here. He uh, struggled a little bit throughout. There we go, setting up one of our inter or our intersection cameras, setting that thing up. So yeah, like I was saying, uh, Johnny Trosa, number 44 car, he just uh, was not quite able to get there, had a little bit of contact, spun out a couple times. Uh, the other cars, actually all three of these cars really had issues that prevailed. The 61 machine, that driver he is Nick Shepner, and the number one is driver Brandon Leonard. Leonard, of course, is carrying, in fact, two cars in this race. We'll be carrying Lovich to be on board cameras. As they line them up. 15 car was not able to get out here, so we'll see if they end up putting down the $100 to race in the main event. If they feel like the car does have a chance to do it I'm looking over in the pit area right now they are under the hood so it looks like maybe uh, a fuel struggling to get to the motor perhaps maybe a carburetor issue or something holding back the 15 they were so close to making it out here they got they got lights a blazing right now they're they're running you can see this team is doing their everything that they can to get this car to start but the green flag is out for this race so Shebner, early leader, Trosh in second, Leonard in third. Two cars make it. One of these potentially goes home. Trosh is not gonna let go of Leonard. <laughs> and all these cars had issues in their heats when they were trying to get on out here. So that's what is causing their problem. Ooh, the 61 getting up on the berm, but is able to keep it going. Number one machine, oh, Trosh nearly spins out. You're gonna see him just clip the berm there as well as they continue on. Everyone on the same side of the track. Anything can close this field up. You do not want to spin out. We saw the 61 do that by himself a few times in the last race. I'm wondering if his hood's gonna pop up. It almost, almost looks like it. It's kind of bumping up a little bit there. Trosh is getting on the gas. You can hear him pushing as fast as he can to get on out there. All right. So Leonard closes in from behind the number one machine. And he's on the bumper. So a battle for the lead is Trosh. Falls a little bit behind. But if anything happens between your top two, if one car spins it out or they get stuck like this, Trosh has a shot to catch up to them halfway. Oh boy, they're taking each other out. Trosh gets into them. All he had to do was go around. He's moving Shepner out of the way. This is your transfer spot. <laughs> 
So Leonard's looking good, but did somebody lose an axle? Looks like the 61 lost the left rear. Way over on the other side of the track, Leonard continues on. Trosh is stuck and trying to get a disattached. <laughs> or maybe unattached is the word I'm looking for. Leonard comes around just running laps by himself at this point. That's a bummer for Shepner. Technically, Shepner is your last transfer. But Trosh is the car that's still running. All Trosh needs to do is scoot his car a little bit past that 61 machine and he will be the transfer. Again, talk about a broken axle. You can see how this is sitting there on the track. The white flag flies for Leonard. He just needs to find a way to get around. That's a shortcut. You see our camera right there, still standing. This will be an interesting scenario for Trosh. Don't hit that. <laughs> It'll go right through. Well, here comes Leonard out of turn four to take the checkered flag. So Brandon Leonard. Uh, it's a race. Whoever gets to the checkered flag first wins. 61's trying. <laughs> Who's it gonna be? <laughs> this is your transfer battle. Who's it gonna be at the line? They're stuck again. Whoever gets there first out, maybe, I think it's still an axle. Can the 61 do it? He's got to cross the line. Tro starts back up. It's a race to the finish line. Who's it gonna be? Oh, 61 not able to go straight. Tro takes the checkered and makes it to the A main event. Oh, wow. Well, this car's still rolling. Just drive it, just drive it like that, and you're good. Oh, good times. Last chance qualifier. Next up is the main event. All right, ladies and gentlemen, on this August 24th, 2017 evening, a beautiful night out here at the Antelope Valley Fairgrounds, and we're about to see a big old figure eight race. Ten cars going to be racing in this. They had an open bracket, so the way that this worked, three cars transferred from each of the two heat races. That set us with six cars. Then we took two cars from the B main event. You'll notice that that adds up to eight. There was a buy-in option for those drivers that did not race their way in. So wouldn't you know it, we had two drivers, that being Lave in the number 15, as well as Shepner in the number 61, who bought in. So they put $100 down, that adds to the purse. And we get ready to go racing. So, starting lineup here, the number 88 machine starting on the pole. That is driver Tim Daughtry, is how I heard it pronounced, but it very clearly looks like Darty to me. <laughs> Starting outside of him, the 5150, Kenny Boysvert. Then we got the 50 machine of Jeremy Edwards, and outside of him, the Onion Car. The driver, the 79 of Mike Hopkins. Move back another row, the 14 is driver Peyton Zamerslaw. And the 49, Ken Lucasonis. Then we move to our fourth row, the number 15 machine of Mike Lave. Michael Lave getting that car fixed and back out here after a huge intersection hit. And then the number one winner of the B-Man event, Brandon Leonard. We got the 44 machine, the second transfer that was out here, that being Johnny Trosh. And another of the buy-ins was the 61 machine. That driver is Nick Shepner. So 10 of these cars getting ready to go on this small little dirt track here at the Antelope Valley Fair. And this is going to be a 10 car dash, 30 laps, 20 laps of racing, then a 10 lap dash to finish it all up. These 10 cars, it's all about survival in this. We've seen this in the years past. You got to survive to the end to win. It sounds obvious, but these drivers drive hard, they push it, and they're a lot of fun to watch out here. So we'll keep an eye on who's able to get the victory. Keep an eye on who's your leader. It'll be nice because they're going to have that 20 lap run and then they're going to stop everyone for a 10 lap dash so that's going to help us kind of sort the field out because sometimes sometimes things get a little crazy as far as who's running where and whatnot specifically with low budget TV. so it'll be nice to kind of keep an eye on all that look at these cars working their way around the turns as they await the green flag to start things off Be 
look at the field. A lot of aggressive racing in the heats. Green flag, and we are racing figure eights at the Antelope Valley Fair 2017. Will the camera survive? Well, there goes Edwards around, and there goes the camera. It's already knocked down. <laughs> oh, no. All right. <laughs> oh, 15 is going the opposite direction. We've lost both of our cameras. It took us one lap to lose our cameras, folks. One lap, and we have cameras all over the racetrack. <laughs> oh, man. That certainly didn't take very long. Well, if I, if I knew these drivers were just going to completely disregard the, uh, the berm area, maybe I would have been a little bit more prepared for that. So there go our intersection cams as they drive on through. I believe Doherty is the leader as we go through right here. And stack cars up. That's Boys Vert, Troche, Lucasonis. Oh boy! We're figure eighting. I do not have a clue where the camera ended up. Well, we'll figure that out a little, little bit later on. Oh! There's one of our cameras. <laughs> I'm not surprised. Oh, intersection time. Leonard with the smallest tap I've ever seen in a figure eight race. So Doherty, I believe that 88 machine might be our leader. 50 of Edwards. Have an issue. Zone. Rose trying to get back on track. Almost gets clipped. So from this point, we are completely in the hands of race control. Figure eight, figure eight. I thought for a second we were gonna roll over Boysford. Oh, there's some contact. Getting into it. Doherty's still having a pretty good run in the 88, but I don't know if that's our lead of 14. Supposed to be keeping it going in the right direction. Here's Boysford around in the 5150, 79. Getting it turned and figure eight. Oh boy. And oh, saw that one coming. A big hit. And a broken axle potentially for Zammer's Law, and here it comes, watch out! Perfect. That couldn't have been any better. If it was gonna hit something, let it hit that part of the Jeep. <laughs> Zammer's Law, stuck out there. That car looks like it's done. Look at the front end of Lugazonis' machine. Here's Boysbert coming through. Oh, are we gonna make it? 44 of Troche seems to be struggling to stay under power. We may have something broken. Red flag is flying! And they almost have an intersection during that moment. And Edwards is just making sure that our tripod never, never makes it. Oh, both of them are gone. One of them might have survived, but I have no idea what happened to this one. No, you're down team stuck. There it is. <laughs> oh! How did you do that? Ladies and gentlemen, we're under the red flag. This is the first time I've ever seen somebody do this on a red flag. The 61 machine just flipped over on a red flag. <laughs> Antelope Valley Fair, we're having fun out here. Here's the other walk of shame now for Low Budget TV. Oh yeah. 
Look at that. Look at that junk. I think that tripod's a little bit bent, but I'm not surprised. Hopefully the camera's not bent. Well, since that stuff was cleared off, we have three cars on track, ladies and gentlemen. What happened? They went so crazy, and they usually do. So boys were looking good. Leonard looking real good in that number one machine. And you have Trosh in the 44. Just had his issue. So we roll a car over, you know, why not? We're here at the Antelope Valley Fair. Let's have some fun. As they get ready to get this one back to green, there's a lot of cars in the pit area right now. I think uh, Jeremy Edwards, the number 50 machine. Let's take a look. Let's take a look. Some of these cars are getting tires. I know there were a lot of flats that were out there. So let, let's take a look at who's returning right now. Hopkins, 79. There they are, it looks like changing the tire, trying to, they're doing something to the left front of Edward's machine. I don't know if he's having issues getting that off. 61, we just saw this car roll over. I don't know if that many people, yeah, they know. Shepner back on track in the number 61 machine after rolling it over. He's had a wild day. He's lost uh, a wheel. I thought he broke an axle earlier, but he just lost the wheel. And Nick Shepner is back on track. Hopefully Edward's able to get back out here. Also, the 88 machine of uh, Doherty pulled it off. It's like they're doing a tire change or something. They're working on the fenders of that machine, but they're certainly gonna have to get that thing going. It's Amber's Leather 14 car, probably done for the night. As we saw the axle be pulled back in, here comes the Edwards machine, the number 50. So we're gonna restart, it looks like, with six, maybe seven machines. Number 50, Jeremy Edwards. And if Doherty is able to return to the track, Lucas Zonis. Looks like that car is down and out. Still got the window net up. Taking a look around for any other cars that are hiding. See the well here's the 15 machine. They pulled that one in, it looks like looks like some kind of mechanical issue stopped that car from really being able to do much in this race unfortunately all the hard work they put into that and then Hines we mentioned how that car was not able to make it out after a huge hit in the intersection I, that was a definite contender for this one a lot of people were keeping an eye on that so we will restart with six nope it will be seven cars as green flag comes out I say seven you only see six. Oh, of course of course the flat tire shows up now for the 61, right? Shepner's like, what happened? This whole, this whole right front is just hanging down on that tire and figure eight. So returning to the racetrack is going to be the 88. You see it driving right there. Doherty still might have some contention here. Only a few laps down at this point. And figure eight. Who would have thought at a figure eight you would see that kind of thing? Three wide through. Doherty. I've always I, like just anticipated that we were gonna have somebody roll over their car with these berms and whatnot. And of course it finally happens, but it happens under a red flag. A couple cars getting together. Troche and Boysvert. They're still beating each other. And around goes Doherty. Figure eight. <laughs> Intersection. Not much of one. Which is good. Uh, Troche, the 44, it looks like he's pulling it off. Something to miss for that car once again. Shepner through the intersection and almost getting hit by Boysvert. 
So as of right now, oh, Trush is back on track. Never give up. I believe Brandon Leonard in the one machine is the leader. Oh yeah. For the drivers of the Dooley's, they are among the bravest warriors that we know. We've seen the hits that are out here tonight. These drivers putting it all on the line for these fans. And we love it. We love coming out here and seeing all the good, good stuff that, that all these drivers do. Turning it around is the one machine of Leonard and making it through the intersection. There's a, a danger at every turn. Oh, Hopkins and Sheffner getting together. Edwards in that 50 machine with police lights up on top. Always love seeing that team out here racing it up at the Antelope Valley Fair. They are on the inside of Leonard. Racing hard with that one machine. Doherty right in the mix as well. And Boysford. Boysford might have clipped the 88, something fell off of that car. It's either well-timed or maybe Big Doherty is coming! Oh my! Literally just saved the car by jumping on the brakes. That was close. Let's do it again. Woo! one's warning everybody. Guys, don't hit the berm, I've done it. It doesn't turn out good. <laughs> oh, why not? Let's go this way. Oh! <laughs> I think I was going to roll over again. Again, it's Nick Shepner over there in turn number one. Now stuck. It looks like that car might be done for the night. So Doherty on the rebound. Leonard having a good run. Edwards is looking strong in the 50 car. It's, it's all a matter of who's running where. At the time of the red flag, who was on the lead lab? Because once they went green, a lot of these cars have been competitive. Oh, Doherty can shoved off the racetrack there. So if the 50 car was on the lead lab, that would be our leader. Otherwise, it's still the number one machine of Leonard. Boys were hanging in there strong. Hopkins, Doherty. Sideways. Good racing amongst your top five. Really even group, you notice. They haven't, well, as I say that, <laughs> we're going to separate a little bit. But uh, they haven't really, really been able to separate. We haven't seen so much intersection action in the last few laps because these cars have all been hanging around the same spot, but that's all about to change right now. So they had their contact there. Hopkins now working his way past Leonard. Doherty. The Hopkins machine. I love the way that this car is driving. 79, the Onion. Oh, Edwards with an issue? to miss it looks like the oh you know the cheers I just heard some cheers the 61 got rolling again but oh yeah as you'll see that open smoke now they have lost a radiator hose well, these drivers the the last remaining ones seem to want to make it to the finish at the very least Oh. 
White flag. Everyone's still trying to go. Spinning the rear wheels and everything. Going through the intersection. Checkered flag for Hopkins. Well, folks, as always, pleasure for us to be able to come on out here, cover this figure eight racing at the Antelope Valley Fair. Another wild one. We saw how many cars were left at the end of it. But man, they were competitive there at the end. Hopkins taking the win. And then Sunday night, we've got the Demolition Derby. Oh, yeah! Now that driver is the winner of my heart. Yes. <laughs> Hopkins might have just broke. No, we're good. Okay. I think we just lost the radiator of the 79. Craig, is it official? All right. <laughs> Here's your winner. Number 79. Mike Congratulations to the 79, the onion machine. Competitors. Other guys coming up shaking his hand. Congratulate them. A little drink of water.